let's talk about lungs and airways. So here's a, that cross section through the thoracic cavity, and in yellow we see the right lung as well as the left lung. Remember, this is an anatomical picture whenever you see illustrations, um, which means the right is, um, we're looking from top to bottom, that's posterior and that's anterior. Conversely, because I know this is where it gets confusing with axial sections of CT and MR, but this is an anatomical picture. So there's our orientation. Um, the right lung has three lobes and two fissures. It has an upper lobe that is separated from the middle lobe by this horizontal fissure. There's our right middle lobe, which is separated by the oblique fissure from the right lower lobe. So this is an anterior view of the lung. If we look at a posterior view of the lung, that whole region is that inferior lobe or the lower lobe, and there's our oblique fissure. Notice how big it is. Now the left lung, conversely, only has two lobes. It has an upper lobe separated by the oblique fissure from the lower lobe. And the upper lobe has this cool little thing called the lingula that sticks out. And it's uh, this small version which would have been the middle lobe um, of the lung. But because of the development of the heart, it's much. Uh, there was no middle lobe that formed. And all you have this remnant called the lingula because it looks like this little tongue wagging out. So the airways, we have first that trachea, which is this uh, semi-flexible tube with these C-shaped cartilaginous rig seg uh, rings segmentally located that help keep the airways open. Um, and the trachea at the very bottom where it bifurcates, this area called the carina, where the carina then is the bifurcation of the trachea into right and left primary bronchi, also known as right and left main bronchi. So the right primary bronchus is much wider and more vertical and shorter than the, uh, and that's what supplies, pardon me, right primary bronchus or right main bronchus supplies the entire right lung. Whereas the left primary bronchus is more horizontal, its uh, diameter is thinner, and it's longer than its counterpart uh, right primary bronchus or right main bronchus. And that left main bronchus, it supplies the left lung. Both of these primary bronchi bifurcate into secondary bronchi, also known as lobular bronchi, because they supply parts of the right lung. For example, there are three secondary bronchi on the right to correspond to the three lobes, which is why it's sometimes called lobar bronchi. So this upper secondary bronchus supplies the upper lobe. The middle segmental excuse me, the middle lobular or middle secondary bronchus supplies the middle lobe, and then the lower secondary bronchus supplies the lower lobe. Now on our left-hand side, there are only two secondary bronchi to correspond to the upper lobe and the lower lobe. Then these secondary bronchi divide into or branch into tertiary bronchi. They're also known as segmental, and I'll show why. And so notice that there is now parts of each lobe or segments of each lobe supplied by only one of those airways. And so we see here in color the matchup from that upper secondary bronchi to these three tertiary or second segmental parts of the lung. Here we have in, um, as well. So this is why these segments, called bronchopulmonary segments, are regions of a lobe supplied by only one of these tertiary bronchi. Now, a bronchopulmonary segment is a very uh, discrete region of lung where vessels and airways can be surgically isolated and removed. And so the rest of this is just showing now through color where these tertiary bronchi match up where they're associated parts of the or segments of their lobe. The airways themselves, the trachea, bronchial tree, and bronchioles, have both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation. The picture on the right is a cross section through the chest with the airway shown in the middle. Um, and then the picture on the left shows uh, part of the central nervous system with T1 to T4 shown. Well, sympathetic innervation uh, that goes to the uh, airways arises from the T1 to T4 spinal cord levels. I'm just going to show the T1 level. 
where uh, preganglionic sympathetic neuron courses through the ventral root, ventral ramus, and white ramus communicons to synapse with the postganglionic cell body in the um, sympathetic chain. And then the postganglionic sympathetic neuron courses out to the pulmonary plexus and to the airways and causes bronchodilation. The airways get bigger because when a sympathetic response, you want to get as much oxygen as you can. The parasympathetic arises from the medulla. Remember this cranial sacral origin of parasympathetics. And so there in the medulla oblongata is where the preganglionic neuron arises and then courses out to the pulmonary plexus, synapses, and a postganglionic parasympathetic neuron causes bronchoconstriction or reduction in the airways. So if we take a look at this picture and notice that these bronchi continue to branch as we go down, and so we blow up this little area, and here we have the respiratory portion of the airways where there's our bronchioles that's kind of there in yellow with this plates of cartilage, which their whole function is to keep the airways from collapsing upon themselves when we exhale. And then also smooth muscle that controls the diameter of our airways, and that's what the sympathetic innervation is causing our airways to dilate or cause bronchodilation. And where parasympathetic neurons cause bronchoconstriction is by acting on the smooth muscle. So in oxygen, when we inhale, it moves all the way, courses into these alveolar sacs that are shown there in green. These alveolar sacs look like clusters of grapes. And so we need to then have this exchange. And so here we have a pulmonary artery going down to pulmonary arterioles. And so carbon, carbon dioxide is coming from the right side of the heart. And then the pulmonary arteries move this carbon dioxide. So it's now within these pulmonary, uh, it's now within these alveolar sacs. And the pulmonary capillaries is where this gas exchange occurs where oxygen is going to course out the pulmonary capillaries into the pulmonary veins and out to the left atrium of the heart. Whereas carbon dioxide is going to course out the airways through the trachea and out the mouth. So gas exchange, which is so important in lung anatomy, occurs right there at the alveolar sacs and pulmonary capillaries.